poverty with him. Let's listen to those who are hurting. Mourn with those who are weeping. Let's do what we hear the angels singing for love, for peace, for goodwill, for all humanity this Advent. May Jesus teach a weary world and our weary souls to fight for justice and someday live in peace. That poem is called Advent for Weary Souls. And as we think about the events of this past year, I wonder if your soul is a little weary. I wonder if it's a little tired. As we enter into the Advent season, don't you want to cry out for a savior? A savior who will come down to earth to bring justice, to, br to give life, to forgive sins, to shine light, to live love. That's what Jesus came down to earth to do. The God who created it all became flesh and blood and came down to earth to start relationships, to give us these gifts that are so valuable. And during the season of Advent, we recognize that we need that Savior to come down to earth, don't we? And at that same time, we recognize that we want our Christmas to be a little more down to earth. If I could offer you that gift, would you take it? Say, yeah, I want to be a little more down to earth this Christmas, right? Because we get so busy with all the things going on. I, for myself, I got real excited about Christmas this season with a three and a four year old and like the magic of Christmas lights. And I got so excited until I pulled out my lights from last year and realized that half the strands don't work. And so yesterday I was pulling all the lights and trying different combinations and, right? I mean, there's this excitement and frustration. I wonder if you might feel some of those mixed emotions or when you think about gift giving and the excitement, but maybe the stress of budgeting around that. Or you think about the wonderful Christmas parties you get to go to and, and just the busy calendars that pack up with party after event after event. I wonder if we might need to be a little more down to earth this Christmas season, a little more simple. And if we do that, if we are down to earth people, then maybe we will experience the Christ who came down to earth to offer us some of the greatest gifts ever. Today we're gonna to be talking about Jesus coming down to earth to bring justice. When I say justice, what do you think of? I wonder if you think of a courtroom and a judge and a jury and, and somebody has committed a crime and then they receive a punishment for that crime. That might be one way to think about justice, justice as punishment. I know for myself, I've been formed by the idea of justice in Hollywood because it makes some really great action movies, right? So I don't know if any Hollywood characters have ever informed your understanding of justice. Maybe it was John Wayne in the old westerns and justice looked like a six shooter. Maybe justice was Batman or Spider-Man. I know for me, when I think of justice in the movies, I think of Braveheart, of William Wallace, that sword bringing justice, right? When I first watch the movie, I see that William Wallace's family is, is killed in a horrific way, and he spends the rest of the movie getting justice, right? Getting revenge. And I don't know if it's just like the, the testosterone in me or what, but as I watch it, I'm thinking, get him, get him, get him. Did anybody watch that thinking the same thing? Right, like that's the type of justice that we so often want. Justice as a form of punishment, justice as a form of revenge. And I'll admit that sometimes I live in that world because I enjoy those movies. But the reality is that God offers us a different form of judgment. Judge, judgment not as punishment, but judgment as restorative. Justice is restorative. Within the scriptures, the word justice or righteousness, they're, they're pretty synonymous. 
in the scriptures and, and they're used a thousand times in this Bible. So justice isn't just a descriptive word for God, but it is instead describes the heart of God. So maybe our image of justice goes from William Wallace to a baby in a manger. What if we rethink justice this morning? As we rethink justice and this Christ child who came to bring justice, we start with an understanding of Genesis 1, verse 27. And it says, so God created humankind in his image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. Our understanding of justice begins with the understanding that each person is created in the image of God. Every single person. So that person we disagree with, they're created in the image of God. That person we look at and we think they are just a monster. They're created in the image of God. I want you to see some of these definitions of of justice. Justice is being morally right, equitable, fair. Brian McLaren says that justice, justice is the right use of power in our relationships with others. Cornell West says this, one of my favorite definitions of justice. Justice is what love looks like in public. See, all these definitions of justice revolve around the fact that all people are created in the image of God. And so if there is a broken relationship, if there is a strain, God desires each person to be brought back into that right relationship with God. So when we think about justice, we know that the victims of whatever crime need justice. But we also know that the perpetrator, the person that does the harm, is also in need of justice. They're in need of restoration, both with God and with their fellow human beings. So this morning, let's replace the image of justice. Instead of William Wallace, let's have the image of the Christ child bringing justice as we look at Isaiah chapter 42, verses one through nine. The scripture passage is written nearly 600 years before the birth of Christ. It was written in a time of chaos when the Israelites were exiled and they needed a savior. They needed justice. It was then fulfilled by Jesus Christ. And so listen to this prophecy about Christ. Here is my servant whom I uphold, my chosen in whom my soul delights. I have put my spirit upon him. He will bring forth justice to the nations. He will not cry or lift up his voice or make it heard in the street. A bruised reed he will not break and a dimly burning wick he will not quench. He will faithfully bring forth justice. He will not grow faint or be crushed until he has established justice in the earth and the coastlands wait for his teaching. Thus says God, the Lord who created the heavens and stretched them out, who spread out the earth and what comes from it, who gives breath to the people upon it and spirit to those who walk in it. I am the Lord, I have called you in righteousness. I have taken you by the hand and kept you. I have given you as a covenant to the people, a light to the nations, to open the eyes that are blind, to bring out the prisoners from the dungeon, from the prison those who sit in darkness. I am the Lord, that is my name. My glory I give to no other, nor my praise to idols. See, the former things have come to pass, and the new things I now declare, before they spring forth, I tell you of them. Jesus came down to earth to bring justice, a new image of justice. And I wonder if our Savior spent some time reading the prophet Isaiah. And I wonder if as he read those words, he knew that those words were describing him. 
that they were to describe the type of justice that he was supposed to bring about. Could the prophet Isaiah have helped shape Jesus' mission on this earth? We see at the beginning of the Gospel of Luke, in Luke chapter four, Jesus is in the synagogue on the Sabbath and, and they give him a scroll from the prophet Isaiah. And Jesus unrolls it and, and he reads another prophecy. And he says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he's anointed me to bring good news to the poor sent me to proclaim release to the captives, recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, and to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Jesus is quoting Isaiah, and then he rolls up the scroll and says, today in your hearing this prophecy has been fulfilled. Jesus came to bring about justice in a way that was so countercultural to his time and to our time. As we think about our image of justice changing, I also think about Jesus implementing justice with the, the woman caught in the act of adultery. If you'll remember that story, Jesus is, is teaching and, and a number of religious leaders come and they throw a woman at his feet and they say this woman was caught in the very act of adultery. And the law of Moses says that she deserves to be stoned. They wanted justice. There was crime and there should have been a punishment. But remember what Jesus says. He says, those of you without sin, cast the first stone. And one by one, the stones drop. And Jesus is left alone with this woman. And he tells her, I don't condemn you. Go and sin no more. See, that's restorative justice. That's justice that brings about healing. That, that honored her dignity, that helped her be fully created in the image of God. Restorative justice is the image that Jesus Christ brings for us. And so I wonder, this Christmas season, might we be people who can be a little more down to earth, a little more simple, and in that process, catch that gift of giving justice to other people? Could you and I be people who are about justice? One commentator said this about justice. They said, justice is to discipleship as waves are to surfers. Justice is to discipleship as waves are to surfers. You can't be a surfer without waves and you can't be a disciple without justice. And I know that surfers spend lots of time going to seek out the best waves. And during this busy Christmas season, I don't know about you, but I know I am seeking out the best ways to save money on Christmas gifts. I'm gonna spend a lot of time searching for those best deals but I'm gonna challenge myself and I'll challenge you. Take a fraction of the time you spend searching for gifts and spend some time seeking injustice. Find those places in our community where there is injustice, where things aren't as they should be because injustices are all around if we open our eyes and our ears. They have to do with poverty, human trafficking, war, sweatshops, racism, hate. Injustices are all around us. So I wonder if this passage from Isaiah, this passage that where, where God call, told Jesus that he would be someone to bring about justice, I wonder if you and I might be people who bring about justice. So I'm going to read the first four verses from the book of Isaiah, or from the chapter 42 of Isaiah today. And I wonder if these might form you in a similar way that they might have formed Jesus. Maybe we might be people who bring justice. Here is my servant. You are the servants. Whom I uphold, my chosen, and whom my soul delights. 
I have put my spirit upon you. You will bring forth justice to the nations. You will not cry or lift your voice or make it heard in the street. A bruised reed you will not break and a dimly burning wick you will not quench. You will faithfully bring forth justice. You will not grow faint or be crushed until you have established justice in the earth and the coastlands wait for your teaching. This passage is for us as well. I wonder if we might be people who bring about justice. And the sad reality is that the injustices happen right here in our neighborhood. I was talking to a friend who, who goes to Westside Baptist, and Westside Baptist is an African American congregation in Louisville. And she was telling me about a situation that happened to one of her best friends who was at a gas station. He's an African-American man, and he was, he was getting gas at the QT gas station on 3040 in Louisville. I wonder if you've been there. He's a police officer in Louisville, but he wasn't on duty, so he wasn't in his uniform, and he wasn't in his police car. Instead, he was dad, and he had his two little girls in the back seat with him. And as he's filling up his gas, a truck pulls up behind him, and the man starts yelling at the father and starts telling him that this is a diesel pump and he needs access to his diesel fuel. He starts yelling at him, using racial slurs, and all the while this father, this police officer, this police officer who wakes up on a daily basis to put on a uniform to serve and protect the man who's yelling at him. His father just has to stand there hoping his kids don't hear too much of it, he finishes pumping the gas and he drives off. That's an injustice. I have no clue what that father said to his two little girls in the back seat. To be honest with you, I've never had to think of what I might say in that situation and I probably won't. But there was an injustice that took place in our neighborhood. And my guess is it's not the last time something like that is gonna happen. So I wonder if you, as people of justice, what would you have done if you were in that situation? What would you have done if you were at the gas station pumping gas and you saw this take place? I've wrestled with this question the past two weeks because that initial form of justice, that William Wallace form of justice started to well up in me the very first time I heard this story. And so what I want to have happen, the Clay Horton, what Clay Horton wants to have happen is some big dude like William Wallace to come out and slash the guy's truck tires and say, you don't do this. Would anybody else kind of want that? But that's not God's form of justice, right? That's kind of what I want. But the form of justice that we see in the scriptures is a restorative type of justice. And so what we realize is that the man who's yelling the racial slurs has a strained relationship with God and with his neighbor. And what God wants more than anything is for that person to be in a right relationship with God. And so restorative justice has to look like healing for the man doing the yelling and healing for the father being yelled at. So what would you do? What do we do when we see that? There are numerous options, and I think if we're open to the Holy Spirit, we would be guided to make the right decision. But sometimes I think in my mind that maybe I would pull out my phone and I would record it and and to make sure that that man knew that he couldn't do anything else because it was being recorded and I was going to turn that in. Other times I think that I might have gone and and stood next to the father in solidarity to just show him that, that I didn't agree with the man who was yelling at him. I don't know what I would do but I know that we are called to be people who bring about justice. We missed that moment. You and I weren't there, but there's a chance that injustices might pop up in other places in our world. 
And so this Advent season, maybe we can be down to earth and maybe we can be a little proactive with justice. I was talking to one of my other friends at, at Westside Baptist. He's a minister there. And he said a, a couple weekends ago, he and his Sunday school class went to a cafe after church. So they were dressed in their Sunday best. They enjoyed the meal and as they were walking out, a white woman stopped this minister and said, excuse me, sir, were, were you just at church? And he said, yeah, yeah, I was. And she said, I, I realized that, that my children need to be exposed to mo more diversity. My children need to be exposed to people who look different than them but still love Jesus. And so I, I was wondering if it would be okay if every once in a while my family came and worshiped at your church. And that minister said, of course, we would love to ha have you. And so they exchanged information about the church and as they wrapped up that conversation, the minister looked at her and said, so where do you go to church? And she said, Treach Memorial United Methodist Church. As the minister shared that story with me, my heart leapt. And I was so proud to be one of your pastors because I know that this is a church that is proactive about justice. This is a church that sees injustices and says we have to do something about them. As we enter this Advent season, we are reminded that Jesus Christ came down to earth and in the very being, in his very being, he started a relationship with us and that relationship led to justice. So what might it be like for us to be down to earth people, to do something simple, maybe start a relationship with somebody else, to enter into a, a, a place of discomfort maybe, but to then be people who bring about justice. Let's pray. Holy and loving God, we know that there are injustices all around. And we thank you that you came and set the example for us, that you entered into our world, that you came down to earth. You became flesh and blood to start a relationship with us to ultimately bring about justice. So as your people, God, let us be people who can be simple, who can be focused, who can be open to your Holy Spirit moving in our lives. And may we bring about the justice that you seek. We pray this in Jesus' name, amen. As the ushers come forward to receive this morning's tithes and offering, I remind you that Advent is the beginning of the Christian year, but it's also the end of our calendar year, and so your end of year giving